Wells Fargo Championship, Chris Trot from the TaylorMade Tour team, joined by one of my personal favourites, UK's finest, Mr. Tommy Fleetwood. I thought you were going to say personal friends, but I thought that was too much. <laughs> it was definitely too much, right? Let's cover the what's in the bag. The gapping is what shines in this golf bag. You've I've, spent I've a lot only of just time. realised that I have uh, numbers written on them for well, the uh, ask you, lots that, and lines. Is that how something? efficient you actually are? Uh, He's got 56.5 and 20.5 written on I, the underside of a Sim 2 Max 7 I, wood. I have a feeling that I didn't write them. Um, but uh, what would that mean, Charlie? Loft and lie? Yeah, it's loft and lie, and 20.5 would be like a two and a half iron. So it gaps pretty good three iron-ish into your four iron, because I know, as if I'd pre-planned it, I've just got your specs well, off the trailer here, yeah, my friend. Imagine, imagine that. Um, 22 and a half on the four iron, and then you move into yeah. different CG in the and, and that's easier to hit and get in the air than a three iron, and um, out of a little bit of a muter up as well, it makes it easier. So there's our first lesson. Even the pros are transitioning and thinking about how easy these clubs are to hit. So let's peel some of these off. We've got the five wood sim two. Just throw the head cover. It's, it's a signature I'll, move. I'll throw the You're head not going to well throw it. Yep, yeah, signature that. move. Okay, so we go rocket sim two. Then we go five wood sim two. This is sim two max. Don't worry, I've not missed out the big dog. Difference in the models. What's the thinking there? What do you know why you've gone difference? I know, but do you know why you've gone sim two, sim two, sim max? No. Because we don't make this in a seven wood, and you wanted a seven wood. That's why. That wasn't the answer I was expecting. I will elaborate on this. Lie angles lofts for Tommy Fleetwood is a big thing. When we test with him, we work through that and we look at it in intricate detail. Everything from his Sim 2 driver, which is playing with the Tensei K Series 70 TX, that's only going to be tip cut an inch. Everything else is tip cut a little bit more, which controls the spin rate as he goes into the bag. That shows you as a player these boys are the hitters. We're the fitters, they're the hitters. That's why we keep it in that route. Do you I'm, like that I'm, tack? I'm learning a lot here, to be honest. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Then we go four iron down to pitching wedge in. As you look at these and I look at them, you think they are the TW iron. Now talk to me about what these truly are. You tell the camera what your irons truly are, because that's pretty pimping when you the, get... The, they have a TF on them. Um, I, I actually, to be fair, while we're on story time tiger did a clinic in japan yeah. and they asked him about his irons and he said that i had a set before him so uh it's they should true. ask me which is actually true um but the tfs i think they're a tiny slightly different bit of shape but very very close and i think it's the groove pattern that's the that's the difference um between mine and the t tw's and probably um sales figures as well i would say probably have a slight difference yeah, yeah. maybe when we look at them, the, the biggest thing about this set of golf clubs is they grade larger pitching wedge through to smaller long iron. Did that, is that something you're even aware of or not? The TFs and the TWs, you get into a slightly more sleek long iron, which shows how good you are at long irons. I mean, honestly, this would make me nervous if I was going to hit this. Makes me nervous sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, try, let's talk golf shafts. You're going PX 6.5. Yeah in the irons, we've talked about his gapping, down to the pitching wedge, but you do um, change as you get into uh, the wedges. Yeah, I've, I've, had, uh, I've had these shafts in my iron since I was 14, never really? changed. You must um, have been a strong 14 year old. Uh, yeah, I was a strong 14, either a strong 14 year old or a weak 30 year old, I'm not <laughs> sure which one. And, um, and then I think just as I get down to, to these wedges, I think just the uh, dynamic goals, they, they give me a tiny little bit of extra feel in the wedges, just a little bit more give. Um, and it's just something I'm comfortable with, the flight of my wedges and everything like that. And I think, um, I think these just felt, uh, with a wedge that, where you're playing so many different shots, um, out of traps, out of rough, um, you know, different feels, um, different shaft movements, I just think that these felt a little bit too um, rigid to me and I wanted a little bit more given a little bit of extra So feel. feel, that'll be swing weights. We're not even going to question him on that. You know he's a player. We're not going to talk about that balance point. What I will say, you travel, and you told me this, with a few more clubs than what we're seeing in here, and yep. then you decide on your 14. Elaborate on that for us. Sometimes you go to the West Coast and play over there in cooler conditions. Then you go to Florida, then you're in Bermuda Rough. Um, you have majors, which are different conditions all the way through the year. And the bag setup, you want to be as simple as possible. So you want to take them everywhere, but there's always, you know, for instance, when I play the Open, um, I really can't see me having a seven wood in the bag. I'll yep. probably have a three iron or a sense. two iron in. Um, you know, you might play 
I might actually end up playing a shorter course like Hilton Ed, where I actually just kept these in, but there might be a chance to actually put an extra wedge in because you know you're going to have a few. So I think every now and again there's a little switch in, in something, but for the majority of the time, you know, there's a lot of big tournaments, there's, you know, a lot on the line and you want something as constant as possible and your bag setup is one of them. Does this mean anything to you, insignificant, or based on you not being superstitious, can I just throw this to this kid over here and get him get you a new one? Would you like the heck of her? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. There you go. Um, happy birthday. Let's talk about the rock roller. It's brand new. Spud roller. Spud yeah. roller. I like that. Spuds that roll straight. Unique alignment on the top. This is actually prototype for TaylorMade at the moment. I'm going to let you describe it for me. What's your thoughts on it? Why do you like it? Um, it's a recently changed shape. Um, you know, I put it for a long time with um, a blade type putter. Um, anytime um, I had a little bit of weight in the back, I struggled with rotation. This has been really good. I've changed hosel. Um, what was the hosel called that I used? You used a fluted hosel. A fluted hosel. Um, and I've used that for a long, long time. And it, it's funny, really, like even on a putter, which is, you know, a putter really is just a, you know, a lump of metal that you're hitting like most of the time, 50 foot at most. It's not like a, um, it's not like a driver where you have 300 yards of things, but the like, the amount of comfort and shape and weight and feel and face, the amount of difference that can make um, is amazing really. Um, it really, really is. And the margins um, are actually pretty small on a putter. So there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot that goes into it. This for me is a change of shaft, a change of hosel, change of head, the face, the grooves have been, I, th I feel like the, the grooves have made a big difference to the roll of the ball. This has been really good so far, like a recent change and um, liking it. Let's conclude on that because you're talking about the golf ball. You got one in your pocket, hopefully. What golf ball do you play? And you said confidence is the key right here. And why number 19? Um, so it's the new TP5X. Um, so I, you know, obviously when I started doing the testing and fitting and everything this year, golf ball is such a like huge, um, like a huge part of it. And um, I, I think one of the, you know, one of the big things is, is how it performs in the wind. For the majority of the time, if you're playing flat calm, you can get away with most things with a golf ball. But once the wind picks up, it's, um, you know, it's a big part of it. But also, again, you go back to the clubs all matching from the, you know, from the way it feels off the putter to the way it feels around the greens to the way you're hitting a six iron to the way you're hitting a driver. The ball has to do it all. Yep. Like the ball has to do all of that and feel comfortable. So it's such a, a big thing. And for me, I've never done that much ball testing. Yeah. Um, you know, I actually didn't have to use the ball this year. And when I was trying it, I thought this, you know, it's amazing and it's worked really, really, really well. Um, and 19, um, it's it's just been like a favorite number of mine for a, for a long time. My date of birth is in English terms, 19191, which is the same backwards. Um, so you are superstitious. So, oh yeah, I am. <laughs> That's um, going to conclude the what's in the bag. Um, Tommy. Thanks for your time. I wish you all the best this week. All it's right, always thanks, great Charlie. to hang out with you. I hope you guys learned a few things there. Go through the details. This is what the best players in the world are doing. Try to do it with your bag.